In this case, we had a very strange uh, thing happening. There was a company that had uh, created, for some reason, this kind of a configuration file. So instead of you going with the normal uh, config file with the square bracket uh, as uh, section names, they just uh, uh, described devices in, in their case. Uh, they de described the devices and then each device had data and the separation between the data was uh, an empty row and then the, it, were, it had key value pairs and the task was actually to provide um, the file and then the key the, the name of the the name of the one of the devices and then provide all the data but first we need to somehow read in all this data and put it into and uh, data structure. So let's see how we can do that. I started with a skeleton that just uh, has used strict use warnings and getting the file from the command line. So if I run this Perl v config then it will complain that it needs the name of the file. Then what we need is um, we can uh, write it in write in the script but I'll rather create a subroutine to read in all this uh, config. So I have a read config subroutine that gets the name of the file in our case and returns the configuration so it will go into the config variable the configuration and um, that would should, should actually be at the that's a question what should it be so we can start with uh, with an array uh, returning here an array so the sub of the read config will look like this. First of all uh, we get the file name here so we just pass uh, we just pass the file name and we have an internal name just to so make it clear let's rename this so this is file name and this is just file name so it's gonna be clear that these are two different um, variables that uh, happen to contain the same value but that we can just rename the, the variable then we open the file right open the the file and we declare a file handle here we open the file for reading and if it doesn't work then we call die and say could not open the file the name of the file here right uh, i like to put it in the in pink quotes just so it will stand out and then we also print out the error message from the operating system and uh, that's it. Now le let's run this code. If I run it again it will complain the lack of file. If I give it a name of a file that doesn't exist then it will give me this error message and if I run it with the actual config file then it will do nothing because that's what uh, I haven't written anything. Then we'll have to go over the lines. So we go over the lines, uh, reading one by one. And uh, the, we are the read line operator, right? And uh, that's it. So we are reading in the line by line. Then the first thing we do is chomping off the new line from the end and then splitting this up the, up the data so we can have we can basically have two lines either it's an empty line so that can be the line can be an empty line which um, let's give it a, a mere, more flexibility and accept any line that has just wide spaces zero or more wide spaces in it so that's that's just an empty line and this means that the, the section ended Otherwise, and, and then we'll do some processing here and go to the next iteration. Otherwise, if uh, it's a real uh, line, then we'll split it up and we'll have a field, field and and a value here. And it's by splitting up, and let's see how we are going to split up the line. So let's see how does this look like. So it has some string and then spaces, some spaces and then the string. So we need to have a splitting, split it up everywhere where we have spaces and then it can be one or more and then an equal sign and then more spaces. 
So this will be the field and the value, and I had a typo here, it's field and value. And then we can uh, create, we basically need to create a hash of these key value pairs, uh, but we are doing it line by line, so we have to update the current hash, which is, let's, let's say, the dollar $h. So we have the field, field value, field um, as the key, and the value as the value. Now, of course, we have to declare this h, which is, uh, which can't, we can't declare it within the line because it will change, it will use in, in within multiple lines, so we have to declare it here outside the loop, but still inside of the function. So this will fill in the key value pairs of the of this small hash, which is representing the current row. So maybe instead of h, we can just call it row here, right? And then uh, once we have uh, all the lines read from the current section, then we have to process that section, process section. And I'm putting here a function call because I know that after we read in all the lines, here, you see, after we read it all the lines, we'll, this will end and the loop will end and for the last section we never call this, uh, we never process the data. Unless of course there is an empty line here, but we can't assume that. So at least I don't want to assume. So I, I will process the section here and also here once the loop is done we are cross processing the section. So how does a processing section work? Sub process a section. Here for, for processing it we'll need the, the hash. So we get the, the hash here and uh, the way we can uh, pass here is that's the row what we need. So actually it's not H, it's, it's called row. And I can pass it like this or ca I can pass a reference to it. It's, it's a probably a nicer way and let's call it just $R. And then um, what we need here, well I'm not, not even sure that we really need any lots of processing here because all the, all the, all the processing is that we have a a sections array, we have a sections array, and we just push on this sections array the reference of this, and that's the whole process section. So we don't really need this. We can just pu pu push the array like this, and this is the same. So we pushed the row to this section, and we do this here as well. And let's see, well, I can run this code, and well, it will tell me that the sections array is missing, obviously, because I don't have it, and uh, that's how what I have to need, sections array. So I run and then now everything looks fine, well, because it doesn't print anything. But if we go back, we should print out now what the result is. So once the all the sections were read, let's just return them. Return, and then return a reference to these sections. And that's what we get here, the config. For, for now it's just a, an array. And let's use data dumper to see what's in there. Dumper the config. And for that of course I need to use data dumper. So we'll see how this works out. And that's strange. Well actually it's not that strange but it looks strange. It means that it, it seems that it's only one section and then there are actually four entries and all four of them refer to the same section. So actually there's one section and three other that are referring to it. And let's go back and try to see what's in there. So this is the data and it really has four sections as uh, expected. 
and what's in there is like all the fields all the six possible fields you see if you come here come here you see that there this has four fields but this has uh, another one uh, an alias that this doesn't have and this has an owner which the others don't have so there are all altogether six different fields so this is somehow a collection of everything which should look a bit strange but if you look at the code what happens is that we only have one single hash here and we keep pushing that single hash on the section instead of creating a separate hash for each section and that's not that easy because this is just uh, a creation this is just the same hash so what we need to do is copy the content of the hash just before we create we push it onto the section so we'll have a new hash and we can do this uh, let's say by this that we create here a hash which can be a temporary hash and it's a copy of everything that's in row and then pushing pushing on that hash and this will do the same here well probably we don't really need this here because that's that's the only one that that has the the data and then there was another issue here that it was collecting all the data and it's because I haven't emptied the, the, the hash so the other thing is that once we pushed the, the, the row onto the section array we have to empty it and uh, let's see now it looks much better now we have all the sections separately if I just go and let you well it, I don't see the, the beginning let's let's buy it two through less and then you can see that at the top you see at the top there is this first section the big and the big blue and if we look at uh, the, so there's the big section the name big and then the big blue and the big green box and the small yellow very funny names and um, well the content is is mostly random the way it's it's being ordered that's how data dumper uh, prints but we have all the data correctly laid out so now that we have it in an array we can just keep working or we can decide that we want a slightly different representation so instead of these sections we would like to return an, a hash where the fields are let's say the values from the name of the device which can be we assume that that's unique the name so we, we are creating now a hash we are creating a hash that want, we want to return so this is the data hash and the keys are and we are using the map function so here we're going to get the sections for each section we'll need two sections we need to have to create an entry in this hash the key is what's in the current section the current section is a reference to a hash it has a field called name this is the key of the new hash and the value is the data itself, the all the, the small hash itself. So now we created the hash and we are returning it that hash. The reference to that hash. Running this script prints out that now you get a hash, you see there's a hash, and in this hash we have four four keys, four entries the entry the key of that hash is the name of the specific uh, device specific uh, class and then the value is a reference to a hash with all the key value pairs there is a slight duplication because the name is still in di in, in here too but that doesn't uh, really disturb us so this function this map function takes an array first of all and then creates a uh, key value pairs where the key is the, the, f the value the key is the, 
the name value of the original hash and the value is just the original hash, the small one that represents one section. So now you already have a function that's uh, reading in the data. Let's just have a little more test. What happens if there is an empty row here? And if I run the script, then you will see there is this empty thing here because now we process the data again even though there was there it was it has already been processed. So this thing that, that, that we're pushing the data here ag again is can be problematic. It was useful earlier because we didn't have a last empty row, but it's problematic now. So we should do uh, we should only do this if there is data in the row. So let's try this again. You see, this disappeared. Again, we have only the four entries. Let's do another little exercise here. Another, what happens if there are two empty rows here? I think we'll have the same problem. If I run this, again I'll have an, an empty entry. And the reason is, let's go back to the code, is because here when we encounter an empty a row, we just call the section and push it onto it. Now we don't shouldn't do that, we only should do that if there is an empty row and th there is data in the row. Now again, if I call this, again we'll see that there's, there are only four entries and that's how we want to have it. So you can use this, this function now to read in the file and then we can do all kind of operations on it.